Welcome everybody, it's Unstoppable Stiletzi here with an Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition Castle game. So, many of you might be asking yourselves, this looks a little familiar, right? Yeah, it's the uh, Colorado Deathmatch with Germany and Spain versus Germany and Portugal. I guess last time I recorded this, we had some technical difficulties and my voice didn't actually get added to the recording of the video. But a lot of people who saw it said, you know, this would be really great if you went back and you actually got a full commentary for it. So, you know what? I've listened to the will of the people. Let's do it. Let's, let's do a commentary of this. We don't really need to talk much about the map. It's Colorado. You got a little trade route, cliffs, whatever. And you might have a bit of understanding of what actually happened that game. I'm just going to follow it a lot more closely now and go over it with you. So, maybe you can uh, appreciate the depth of how remarkable this game was for the Spain and Germany team. Yep, so here we are at the star again. It's basically your everyday start. You pop the Minutemen out, you build your church, get all your shipments together. And then you start getting your training cards going any other related stats cards that you want, or factories. Yeah, it's basically just that. Red Germany sets up over here with the stables, whereas Yellow Germany sets up over here. And then you get the nice big fight that happens, right? And then Spain sets up a little bit more on the supporting side over here to better counter the Portuguese, who actually didn't really come up at the front in this game. They sort of stayed back at home, which... I don't think that was the best idea. I think they could have probably came in maybe over here and provide a little bit of help. But yeah, as you see here, this is where the first uh, warfare is going to take place. You got the uh, Minutemen coming this way, and they can pretty easily take shots at the Settler Wagon at this position. But as you know, Settler Wagons, they got the value of about two villagers. So yeah, they have a lot of HP. So even oh, these Minutemen it. blasting constant bullets into them is going to be able to survive long enough to put down the barracks. Four wagons coming in. Some Yulons of Yellow coming to help out. Red Yulons come in to intercept them. And here comes the uh, bloodshed. We got ourselves the Guard Doppelsolners. These are absolute cavalry killing machines. Doesn't matter if you're light cav, heavy cav. Hand cav, range cav, they will just slice through you like butter with their splash attack and their 3x multipliers. Yeah. Look at these uh, war wagons getting completely destroyed here. They have hand armor and they're pretty good at dealing with hand combat, but when it comes to the doppel soldier and its splash multipliers, yeah, they're, get, they're getting completely destroyed here. And you can see uh, Red Germany's uh, resources are going to probably dwindle quite a bit as they try to hold off here. And unfortunately, there are no skirmishers for a Germany to counteract this. They're also just starting now to put down a foundry. Which, you know, it's a little late. I mean, it would be helpful if you had some horse already or some uh, falconets to help out here, but what can you do? Yep. See, now they're starting to get the artillery, but at this point, the numbers of the doppels are just so big that who knows if that's even going to be effective or not for you. And then you got Purple Spain setting up over here, getting ready to do something. Blue is taking a defensive stance, which, if something were to happen down to the Yellow Germany ally, that would not be good. You know, you'd probably want to build a little bit closer to the front lines and start attacking. You know, if Yellow Germany, as you know, starts cutting into here, which it seems like they are, yeah, you're going to want to be there to help start the fight against the Spanish. You don't want to leave the Spanish unscathed because they could always come back and protect the uh, base side. Yep. Yeah, but see, this was the problem that got Red Germany here. They just started to now make anti-infantry. They tried with the foundries before, but those things got burned down way too quickly. Now they're going to try with the skirms, but they don't have the numbers. The mass of these flash attack welding units is enough to completely destroy skirmishers even, because they don't even have the distance to kite with. They're spawning right into them. And that's absolute demolition. Yeah. And it's looking pretty grim for uh, Don Stowe right now. The coin is gone, the food is just about gone, all you got is basically just wood in your back pocket. Total elimination. See this siege right here? This is really the last of the Red German base. I mean, once you get through this, you're scot-free, you're home free into the final stretch of the farms. 
And now we start to see a bit of deployment here by Yellow Germany, because honestly at this point, you may as well start helping against the Spanish, because Red Germany is no longer looking like a threat to you. And in fact, they're getting so desperate, they're going to start to send some Polish winged hussars in, a very powerful unit, mind you, in to try to protect. But even those powerful cavalry are not going to be able to deal with Doppel souls. Nah, the splash attack is just going to... Yep, one strike, most are dead. Gone in really like three to four hits, I would say, for the most part. Villagers caught right in the middle of it, all these separate wagons. Look at all that lost villager economy just in one engagement. He is... He looks dead as a doornail, this Red Germany. He is not coming back from that from what you can see here. Right? And where is the Explorer at? The Explorer is right underneath the PC. Yeah, this is looking like uh, game over for you. And it looks like now Purple is going to have the fight of their life. You know, Purple Spain, they're trying to defend themselves. They're going Lancers to deal with Casadors. They're making skirms to deal with the uh, infamous Portuguese Dragoons. As their ally is getting burned to a crisp here. Their farms, their houses, their church, all gone. What, what could possibly keep this fight going, you might ask? Well, in general, somehow maybe Red could survive, maybe get away, slip away somehow. Yeah, that's really the only thing that could possibly happen here. Yeah, now you see uh, Yellow Germany coming in to start pressuring on two fronts now. Yeah, back, round his behind. Yeah, try, yep, and that was a good call by Yellow Germany. Try to flank him, you know? You got the numbers advantage here, so if you can hit him in places where it really stings, you could take out the Spain, because he's not getting a lot of help. Somehow, the Red Germany is holding on, though, through these remnant war wagons, and the horse artillery right underneath them. Also, some more horse artillery. See, this is kind of interesting. Notice how this artillery foundry that was built at the start hasn't been taken out. And from that, with this leftover coin and wood, the Germany has managed to make more horse artillery, which they can technically use to start spraying away these infantry. We see landmers, which are really just early skirmishers, more upgraded versions of crossbowmen, and we also see the remnants of the Doppels. But unfortunately, just not enough here. They're completely met by an entire force here, boosted by the unction, which grants more damage. And now you got, well, I wouldn't say it's a fatal issue, but now you gotta start thinking, what's the next step now? How do you assault from here? What's the plan, man? Send me food. Yeah, like, how is uh, Yellow's food doing? Yeah, they, they're, they're hungry right now. You, you know how much Doppel Souls cost? That's a lot of food. It's a two-pop unit, you know. They're starving right now. They ate all their pretzels and their bratwurst. They're really uh, looking for some mustard to consume so yeah they're gonna have to get some from the Portuguese allies since you know Portugal they're an economic powerhouse you need resources ask the Portuguese ally for them. and now yellow Germany is gonna have to start investing in war the uh, supper wagons themselves because they're gonna need to start getting some really good gatherers going behind their base do they have um, the uh, guild artisans no not yet they're probably going to want to get that, too, because that's really the big booster card for the Settler Wagons. Kill it. Yep, yep. Take that out. I kind of find it interesting how Red Germany is still in here. And notice how the Explorer has managed to slip away. That is going to cause a lot of problems here. That means that Red Germany is not out of the fight by any means. You might have dealt with the main base and they're no longer a pressing force, but they will continue to supply units to the Spanish as needed. So you, this is not going to turn into a two versus one to victory, it's more going to be a drawn out process and you just need to find a way to make it work. Yeah, notice how the explorers is going through the trouble of even taking treasures like blueberries at this point to get their resource count up. And yeah, you can imagine, they've basically lost just about everything. You know, even a 60 food treasure is gonna be like this lifesaver for you. And maybe get you back into the fight soon enough. Right now we see Yulons and Landmers. But unfortunately, the uh, Spanish Skirms just have extra range over there of the Landmers. The Landmers hit with a lot of damage, but 
you know, spam skirmishes are probably better, you know. Once the missionaries get right behind them with the unction ability, they do have more damage than those landlords do, and they outrange them. Food. Yep, get, get that German some pretzels, man. They're hungry, they're starving right now. Ah, uh, yep. Now, I don't like this from Portugal. They're throwing units into the... into the... Look at this. Look at the... throwing them into the mage shredder here. You're throwing skirms in, you're throwing dragoons in, and there's just all these hyper-boosted Spanish units here just throwing them almost... Not for free right now, but I saw things getting taken down before. And you need... What you need to do as Portugal is you need to build your forward base up to about here, right by the silver mine and start to fortify your position and go in as a group. Stop wasting units like this. In trouble, send. Yeah, yeah, see this right here? Spain is getting a complete stranglehold on the uh, German. Completely surrounded by Lancers. This is like a nightmare if you got landlords. Look at those multipliers, 4x. That is, that is absolutely brutal if you're using a skirmisher unit. That's like death. Instant death. And what do you do now? You got organ guns that are completely undefended right now with, what, skirmishers? No, they just have to throw the lances at them again. What are you going to do about this? Nothing you can do. Right? You got a bit of help from Germany here. You got some culverins, some landlords, a couple of uans, but that doesn't deal with lancers. These lancers completely obliterating you, completely pressing their way through your lines. Look at this damage that they're incurring on you. You gotta do something about that. That is an utter mess. Utter mess. Completely disemboweling. Look at that. And what do you do now? It's almost as if this team here has completely controlled their entire starting area again, you know? You don't have any buildings over here, but really, it's if they effectively control it now because you don't have any presence there anymore. And unfortunately, Yellow Germany, through all this, didn't have time to really put any forward buildings down by the Comanche over here, so that's an utter, utter lack of assault over there. Now, what's interesting is the petards. When I first was recording this and talking to myself, uh, I didn't really see what happened to these guys, because I know the uh, Kaichi Tushki uh, petards are always something to behold. They always have a hidden plan somewhere. Right? They always do something. Meet here. Yeah, meet, meet over here and try to come up with something. Because you still technically have a population advantage, you know? You're dealing with potentially armies of a hundred or more so population than your enemy does. Because looking back at the Red Germany, yeah, they still don't have a lot of resources to be sending army out. I mean, they, get, they certainly could send more war wagons out. And they're slowly agging. Where's the town center? It's right over here. That's where the explorer was heading before. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> Spain going for the infamous Tercio Siege. Don't let it win. Yeah, you gotta watch out for this stuff. Put them behind a wall, get some towers over here. You know what Spain is capable of. I've dealt with it for years against Toledo Torino and Moors of Liberty, those infamous raids of the missionaries with the Tercios. Your factories go up in smoke in seconds with those things. The siege attack is literally unbearable. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you got you got to be aware when you're dealing with Spain the possibility the pipes are going to creep up on your factory. If you're not willing to be ready to do that, you're going to suffer some serious resource losses. I just found an amazement in this game how Red Germany was able to get away with their explorer and start to slowly cue settlers back into the fold. That was a real impressive feat on their part, you know. They just never gave up, they continued to provide support in the form of war wagons, eons, just offsetting this army a little bit so it wasn't just Spain doing the work, you know, there was a little bit of anti-cav mixed in there to help out, right? And now, what you need to see here if you want to win is, uh, yellow and blue is, you need to fight as a cohesive force against an army that has really good stats, because these Spanish units they can hold their own without any help. Look at the damage, like 30 damage if 30 damage if they go back towards the missionaries. That's some real serious stats and 
this deathmatch where everything set the post-industrial age. You know, that's like talking imperial age stats, what you can get with the unction. And now what we're going to see is we're going to see these uh, war wagons try to... Yep, so they're trying to snipe at the petards now. Taking out quite a few of them, but now they're in the range of the doppels. They got to turn back. They don't want to repeat what happened at the start of the match. You know, they completely lost all of them. Yeah, just stay back here with the uh, Spanish Skirms and you're good. You're not going to lose those things with the Spanish Skirms around. But if you try to go out alone, right into the edge of these steel swords, you're, you're as good as done. And how is this Germany set up? So, did they actually send Sorg and Steel at all? Uh, I don't know. I think they... I recall from the first time I played, they did get Sorg and Steel, so... What that basically means is, these uh, doppels, they're going to move slower, but they deal more damage. It's like a weapons upgrade, really, at the cost of being clunkier and clunkier than usual, you know. I mean, there's still, there's, it's a great card to get, especially when you're trying to play defensively. If you got mortars, if you got an ally who's trying to, use, trying to get hand mortars down, having the Soligan Steel card active on your doppels turns you into a literal phalanx protect those assets and I've done it before in arena before and that's why I think one of the people in the arena community basically begged to have that card added to the German deck because they knew there's gonna be times when we have a Chinese ally doing hand mortars and we got somebody doing little bombards and we need a way to create another wall of pikes basically without the pikes to basically protect them and since Germany doesn't do pikes they do doppels in arena that's what you need to provide as an option for them. Yeah. Now this is bad. Don't fight 2v1. Yep, see see right there, this is this was a serious problem for Portugal. They were taking fights by themselves. That's just losing us. Yes, exactly. And how is yep, Portugal is shelling out resources, just losing them for free here. If you don't think you can engage properly, don't go in. I mean now you left the area completely bare. These settler wagons have to return home, and they have to hopefully get these towers up in enough time. You know, these these settler wagons are valuable assets. If you let those die of your ally, you're you're doing the rest of the work on your own. And I know you can't do that right now because you're you're burning your armies up right here on this road over here. It's another mess. Yep, and then you got the old Germany really trying hard here to keep up the assault from the area they were doing before. Right, so yeah, we see some petards landing over here to take off this uh, Spanish barracks and tower. How's that gonna go? They're gonna, yep, they're gonna get the tower. Unfortunately, these petards are just in here punching a civilian. Nothing useful. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look at these culverins completely exposed because Portugal is not attacking at the right time. Now the war wagons of Red Germany can snipe those. Absolutely easily. It's free kills right here. Very ex yep, GG. You can't, you can't win this fight. You got an ally that isn't putting up their end of the deal here, and you're completely wasted right now. What's this? Comanche horse archers? Okay, that's not gonna work. I mean, you gotta realize that light cavalry has a malice against villagers and their multipliers. They're not. It's not. This is not Age of Empires 2, The days of the Huns when you can take like. 30 cab arches out and rip apart somebody's base and kill all their miners and farmers. It's not that type of a game here, folks. You gotta know how to keep up with the times here. And see, here comes, yeah, another another exposed base to the Spanish Tercios. This is a nightmare. You, they eat your base, they kill your town centers, they kill your factories, they kill your houses. I've had the Toledo experience. You do not do this. You need to put walls up or towers. There's, Put choke points up in the, you know, in the um, archi architecture. Yeah, you, you gotta be a city player, and you gotta prepare ways to block off the pikemen from getting to where they need to go. So you can hopefully get some dragoons or skirms in there to start spraying these very low HP units down. But they pack a real punch once they do hit. Yeah, and at this point, it's it's over, man. It's over. You got the Donstow Germany finally in enough position. They're not pumping out resources, but they can definitely maintain a 
almost a full population army right now by playing it smart. And then they got the Spanish ally completely prepared to go wall in here. Far more resources in Portugal because they were playing really effectively and offsetting casualties by using the Unction's increased damage from the missionaries, right? You can see their little aura going around them right now by these little, uh, little crosses on, underneath them. That's basically a sign that it's boosting the attack of those units. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with, uh, what was it, 1k-ish food for Portuguese? Yeah, no coin. Some wood. Yeah, that's not gonna survive two armies like this. You've basically lost the war at this point, and you... The only thing you can do left is, like, resign. Really. I mean, I don't see how you're coming out of this, man. Horse artillery being managed well to take out halberdiers, Spanish skirmishers, and then finally this uh, culverin might be able to roll in and start hitting the way of the fort. Oh, yep, another Tercio attack. Another one, because this area is completely unwalled off. You're just going to take really quick siege damage from his pikes. Yep, and the Yuan's doing the same thing, joining with them and killing the civilians. This is... This is, uh... This is not a good situation right now. This is like nightmare scenario for any Portugal or any player for that matter. You don't want to Spain with Tercios and the German allies doing the raiding work. That's just... Yeah, GG. GG was, like, how many minutes ago? But, okay. Yep. Good match, though. This was a really good Dun Stowe match. You know, Dun Stowe, I've seen a lot of death matches from him. He really impressed, impressed everybody here with his survivability. And also the, uh, the uh, Spain Milky. Just an overall good fighter here. Putting the pressure on and taking out those Portuguese and German armies as needed. And we could check the post game again if you want. You know, let's do it. Resources. Yeah, that Spain was a little powerhouse this whole game, you know. And then, uh, yeah, of course, Portugal's always going to have a decent score, but Spain really did well. Germany, this one, of the lowest, you can see why. They faced a lot of time when they weren't really farming or hunting or mining or lumberjacking or anything, so that makes total sense. But when it comes to the military, Purple Spain was a great ally to this Germany here. Gave them all the time they needed to build up again. 605 kills. That's way more than really anyone else on this list here was able to do. Yeah, and look at the uh, raises they got. Obviously, Yellow's got the most raises because they were really, really destroying Red's base in the beginning. And that's how they got sort of got that award for themselves. But anyways, you know, it was great to do this again. I know people really wanted to hear the commentary for this, and I got some requests, including from the provider of this clip, to do do the commentary. So hopefully you can all enjoy that, you know. See you in the next one. I got a bunch of other uh, recordings to do, like a laundry list of them to do, and I'm going to be trying my best to get them done today for you, or at least a good number of them. So stay tuned for those, too. Sign off now.